Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Recently, I managed to get my hands on one of the very first dioramas I ever made. This is one that I made for a friend's daughter who has a bit of an obsession with dinosaurs. Seeing this piece again gave me a really cool idea for a new project. I was curious to see how my diorama building had changed over time, so what we're going to do in this video is a bit of a redo. To stay true to the original Dino-rama, I'm going to try my best to include all the main features. So that includes some fallen tree trunks, a little bit of bracken and various other foliage, some epoxy water effects and maybe a few redwood trees. Oh, and of course, another dinosaur. So the first thing I needed to do was get hold of another T-Rex which turns out was pretty easy. Then I could start mapping out the terrain. For the base, I used an off-cut of 6mm MDF board that I had laying around. Then I marked out a rough plan of the landforms using the T-Rex as a guide. Then it was time to create the raised areas using some polystyrene foam. This is just cheap packing polystyrene and is perfect for this job. Mainly because it cuts really easily with the hot wire cutter and it's normally free. My wife and I have recently just had our first baby so after buying a lot of new baby furniture it's safe to say I'm not going to run out of this stuff anytime soon. I just cut the foam to loosely follow the plan that I'd already put on the base and used a few cocktail sticks just to hold everything in place. Once I was happy with the layout, I simply used a little bit of hot glue just to stick it down to the base. Then using the hot wire cutter I just removed any of the overhanging foam and started to remove some of the straight edges that were on top. Then with the heat gun I melted some of the foam to give the edges a bit more of a round and natural look. Then after trimming away any exposed cocktail sticks, it was time to mix up some sculptor mould. Sculptor mould's a great product and it really gets the job done, but sometimes it does take a long time to dry, especially in the colder months here. After working with it for quite some time, I've learnt that adding less water is a little bit better and mixing it up a little bit thicker. That way it doesn't take an age to dry. I mixed it up and applied it to the base in small batches just to give me a little bit more working time. Then using my fingers and a little bit of water, I could sculpt the terrain to give a smooth transition between the layers. To create a nice clean border, I measured and cut some polypropylene sheet. Essentially this is the stuff that plastic folders are made out of and it's really durable and it's great for this job. And I know what you're thinking, wow yellow, that's quite a bold choice. But that's another great thing about this stuff, it takes paint really well so we'll be able to tidy it up at the end. I used a few dabs of glue just to hold it in place and then mixed up another small batch of sculptor mould just to fill in the gaps. After all the sculptor mould had dried it was time to mix up a terrain paste. I started with a good amount of acrylic modelling paste, added some fine sand and some burnt umber acrylic paint. I gave this all a good mix together and then added a little bit of fine dried dirt from the garden. The mix doesn't only provide a nice natural texture, I can also use it as a glue to hold the rocks in place. For the rocks I'm just using some decorative pebbles I picked up from a garden centre that have been washed and sterilised. 
Then using an old paintbrush and a little bit of water, I blended the terrain paste into the rocks. And while everything was still wet, I sprinkled over some more of the fine dirt from the garden and a little bit of woodland scenics ballast. Then I mixed up another batch of the texture paste and applied it all over using the same technique. And while that was still wet, I applied some more fine dirt from the garden and some fine brown tile grout through a sieve. Then I gave everything a fine mist in of 90% isopropyl alcohol and locked everything into place with some scenic glue. This is a batch I mixed up myself which is a 50-50 mix of matte mod podge and water with a few drops of flow aid. Then I mopped up any excess glue with a little bit of paper towel and left this all to dry overnight. The next thing to do was to start to add some colour to all of that ground texture. The first step was to prime the entire piece with some black surface primer from Vallejo. Then I gave everything a highlight using some aged white from Vallejo mainly concentrating on the top of the rocks. This will create some nice tonal differences when we begin to build up the layers of paint. Then I base coated the entire piece using some mahogany and some flat earth. The next step in the painting process was to pick out some of the individual stones and give them a little bit of colour. I randomly applied a few brown and grey tones across a number of the rocks just to give a sense of variety. To create more depth on the larger rocks I added more than one of each colour and just blended them together with some water. Then I went back in with the airbrush and reapplied some of those highlights. I then gave all the rocks a very light wash with some Nuln Oil from Games Workshop. This is just to accentuate any shadows. Then everything received a light dry brush with an off-white colour to really make the details pop. Then I protected the whole paint job with some matte varnish applied with the airbrush. Then it was time to build a few trees. For the trunks of the trees, I'm using some natural roots that I've sterilised and dried out. These roots already had some really good texture on them that are going to look great, but I wanted to add some extra detail. I started by coating the bottom of the roots with some PVA glue and letting it dry. Then it was time to mix up some milliput. Milliput is a two-part epoxy putty and it comes in really handy for adding some extra details into pieces like these trees. You just need to mix it in equal parts before you can start sculpting, but I would recommend wearing gloves if you haven't used it before because it can cause skin irritation. I used small pieces of the milliput and applied them to where the PVA glue had dried at the bottom of the roots. I then began to sculpt my exposed roots into the side of the tree using various tools. The milliput is really easy to work with. If you want to try and create a few more smoother transitions, you can either use a damp cloth or some water on the end of your finger just to smooth it out. With the rest of the milliput, I sculpted a few mushrooms and added them to the side of the larger trees. Then I wanted to create some more overhanging branches on some of the smaller trees, 
After drilling a small hole in the side of the tree, I glued in a small pin which I could then attach some more length of dried root to. This was temporarily held in place with a spot of super glue and a touch of activator. I then filled the gaps between the trunk and the branches with some wood filler. Then I smoothed that out using an old paintbrush and some water. Then I super glued some even smaller dried roots onto the side of the trees to simulate some vines. To give the new exposed roots a little more texture, I used some watered down PVA glue and applied some tile grout. I also repeated this step to cover up the joins I'd made earlier and left everything to dry. Once everything had dried, it was then time to move on to paint. I started by priming all the trees in the same way that I primed the rocks previously. Just an undercoat of black primer, highlighted with some aged white. Then I could move on to applying various brown tones to all of the trees. Starting with Vallejo's orange brown, then some burnt umber. And finally, some mahogany, paying particular attention to any recesses to try and create some shadows. All the trees were then dry brushed with a light tan acrylic paint. This one's called Buff Titanium. Then I used some burnt umber acrylic ink as a wash to try and highlight some more of those shadows. And for the deepest recesses I used some more null oil from Games Workshop. The mushrooms also received a nice simple paint job. I used some of the buff titanium as a base coat and followed that up with some sepia wash. The last step to do before adding any foliage of the trees was to create a moss effect. I started by applying some matte mod podge to the base of all the trees and then I sprinkled on some woodland scenics fine turf. This is a mix of burnt grass and medium green. Then for a little more realism and some more depth to the moss, I mixed a few green tones together and applied them to the center of the patch. Then I gradually began to blend it into the fine turf using some water. Because the fine turf is made of foam, it acts as a sponge and absorbs all the paint really well and gets into all the recesses. I then applied some yellow paint directly to the middle of each patch and feathered it out using the same technique with some water. For the tree foliage, I decided to go for some olive green Taloxus Bloom from Diorama and Presepe. Most of their products have usually been made from natural material that's been stabilised. Which is perfect for me because not only do I know they're going to stand the test of time, I also know they're always going to look great. Applying the foliage to the trees was a fairly simple job. <laughs> 
I just cut off small individual pieces and attached them to the end of the branches with a spot of super glue and a little activator. After attaching the trees to the baseboard off camera with a little bit of hot glue, I then mixed up another batch of the terrain paste. I then applied a small amount of the paste to the base of each tree and blended it in with the terrain, making sure to cover any gaps at the same time. I then used some more of the terrain paste to attach some twigs and roots to the base to simulate some logs and fallen branches. I used an old paintbrush with some water to blend these into the terrain the same way as I did the trees. I then brushed on some burnt umber acrylic ink over all of the twigs just to tie them all together. With all the trees and twigs now securely fitted in place, it was time to mix up yet another paste that we could use for the forest floor. I started with some ground texture paste from Vallejo which I then diluted with some tap water. I then mixed in some burnt umber acrylic paint followed by some black gesso and a few drops of burnt umber acrylic ink. Once I was happy with the colour and the consistency, it was time to give the paste some more texture. The first ingredient to add was some dried out potting soil. Then some small dried out roots. And some brown sawdust from Geek Gaming. Then I added a small amount of burnt umber and natural umber pigment powders before making sure everything was thoroughly mixed together. Then I was left with a fairly thick, loose texture paste that was ready to be applied all over the base. Using a small spatula, I could then push the paste into all the nooks and crannies and make sure everything was filled. I used a light tapping motion with the spatula on top of the paste to give it a little bit more volume. And once I had good coverage, I then mixed up some pigment powder washes and applied them around the base of the logs and all the trees. I then added some more of the small dry roots into the paste while it was still wet and followed that up with a sprinkling of more of the potting soil. Then I gave everything another misting of isopropyl alcohol and locked it all in place with some more scenic glue. Before the scenic glue had a chance to dry, I sprinkled over some fine scale leaves. I used some more Woodland Scenics fine turf to create a little bit of a transition between the bank of the stream and the forest floor. The next day, after everything had dried, I could move on to adding some more details to the forest floor, 
I started by creating a moss effect on top of all the larger rocks and logs. This is the same effect I used previously on all the tree trunks. Just used some matte mod podge with some fine turf sprinkled over the top. And then in exactly the same way as before, I mixed up a few different tones of green paint and applied them to each patch of moss. And then apply some yellow tones to the centre of the patch and use some water to blend everything together. And while all the moss effects were drying, I moved on to adding some colour and depth to the stream bed. I started by adding some of AK Interactive's slimy grime across the entire length of the stream bed. I then followed that up with some Vallejo dark green model wash down the center of the stream and behind the waterfalls. I then blended this into the slimy grime using a little bit of water. Before pouring any resin on this piece, I needed to create a few dams to stop all of the resin pooling at the bottom of the stream. So using some clear fixed polymer, I applied a small bead to the top of each waterfall to create a small barrier for the resin. To create the waterfalls, I used some clear plastic packaging that I'd cut into strips. And then using some more clear fix, I glued all of the plastic strips into place. Then it was time to prep for resin. I used a small piece of masking tape and a bead of wood glue to secure the barrier at the top end of the stream. For the larger dam at the front of the stream, I simply hot glued down a piece of perspex sheet. And then I let everything dry for 24 hours in preparation for the resin pour. The next day, I started by pouring the resin to a 50-50 mix. To give the resin some colour, I used a few drops of Biled Tan Green from Citadel. I then tried to mix this in quite gently so I didn't introduce too many bubbles into the resin. But if you're anything like me and you don't listen to your own advice, you can always pop your resin into some warm water to get rid of the bubbles that you told yourself you wouldn't mix into it in the first place. After 10 minutes or so, most of the bubbles should have risen to the top and your resin will be ready to pour. After completing the pour, I used a tongue depressor just to move the resin around and made sure it filled any gaps that I'd missed. Then I used the blowtorch to remove any remaining bubbles and let the resin cure overnight. 24 hours later, I then removed both the dams and used a sharp blade to remove the lip where the resin had started to crawl up the perspex. Then I applied some gloss mod podge across the entire surface of the stream and using the airbrush I moved it around to create a really nice ripple effect. <laughs> <laughs> 
once all the gloss mod podge had dried I could then move on to adding some more detail to the waterfalls. I started by adding some more of the clear fix polymer over the top of the plastic strips. Then using a tongue depressor I could move around the clear fix until I had a look that I was happy with. After around 15 to 20 minutes the clear fix will start to cure. This means it will start to hold its shape a little bit more. It's at this point that I like to sculpt in some extra detail using a toothpick. Then I gave the clear fix a couple of hours to dry completely. Then I could get on to creating some white water. I started by mixing a small amount of clear fix with a few sprays of isopropyl alcohol. The alcohol essentially acts as a thinner which is going to make this clear fix a little bit easier to work with. Once the clear fix had absorbed most of the IPA, I mixed in some soft flake snow from Woodland Scenics. Then using an old flat paintbrush, I stippled the mixture over the top of the waterfalls. Then with an extra fine brush and some white acrylic paint, I gave all the white water some highlights. With the water effects finally completed, the next thing to do was add some much needed foliage. On a recent trip to my local hobby shop, I came across these laser cut plants from Gamers Grass. I've used laser cut plants in the past but I've never used any from this specific brand and after seeing a wide variety of what they had to offer I thought I'd give them a try. I had a lot of plants to get through so I set to work removing them from their sheets and to my surprise they actually pulled away from their sheets a lot easier than I thought they would so soon enough I had a whole bunch of plants that were ready to work with. And on closer inspection you can really see the detail and colour variations throughout these different plants which to be honest isn't really something I've seen before with laser cut products. I'm not entirely sure what these are made out of but it seems as if it might be either a really thin plastic or a laminated card. But whatever it is I've found that they're really good at being manipulated and holding their shape so you can crunch them up for a bit more of a natural look. When it comes to applying them to the base I used a little dab of matte mod podge underneath and used one of my sculpting tools to press them into the ground. This did prove to be a bit of a fiddly job at times but I persevered and by the end of it I had a forest floor filled with some awesome looking plants. The only real drawback to these gamers grass plants is the fact they are quite expensive. I bought 6 packets of these in the end and considering you only get one sheet for each they are a bit expensive, I think in total I paid about £30 for all of them. But I have to admit they do look good especially accompanied by some grass tufts and some more foliage from Diorama Presepe. I then pinned and glued into the base some smaller dried roots that had been painted in the same way as the trees. The idea being that these roots will look like saplings and add a little bit more density to the forest. And after tidying up all four sides with some black gesso primer, the base was finished. <laughs> 
diorama was still missing one thing. Yep, the dinosaur. Or should I say, dinosaurs. I decided that the T-Rex needed to have some company and while looking online for another model I stumbled across this little guy. This is an Ankylosaurus figure from Schleich and it's finished in what they call their premium paint job, which to be honest I thought looked pretty good. The only trouble was this then made the T-Rex look a little out of place. I got hold of this model second hand so it has started to show its age a little bit. And seeing as this figure was also from Schleich, it proved to have a lot of the same texture and detail as the Ankylosaurus. So with that in mind, I decided the T-Rex needed a new paint job. Now painting really isn't my strong suit, so I needed to keep the job simple. After a quick search online, I found a reference picture that I really liked the look of, and then I set to work priming the model. The primer I decided to use was Vallejo's Grey Surface Primer. I gave the entire figure a nice uniform coat and I applied all of this with the airbrush. Then it was time to start building up some colour, so I base coated the entire piece with some skeleton bone from the Army Painter. Then I built up the second layer with some middle stone from Vallejo. Layer 3 was some of Vallejo's mahogany applied to the top half of the figure and the top of the feet. Then I started to block out some of the markings using Vallejo's black grey. The claws on the hands and the feet also received a coat of black grey. The eyes were painted with some of Vallejo's game colour, Moon Yellow. Then all the teeth received a coat of Vallejo's Off-White. I then painted both pupils using some black acrylic paint and then I moved on to giving the entire figure a wash with some Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop. Then I washed all of the teeth with some Seraphim Sepia. Then once all the washes had dried, to restore some colour to the underbelly I dry brushed on some more skeleton bone. Then I gave the teeth a dry brush with some more aged white. Then I dabbed on some watered down pigment powders onto the feet of both figures to create a mud effect. Then after the paint job was protected with a coat of matte varnish, both figures were ready to add to the base. 
so there we have it, my Dino Rama 2.0. I'd love to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments section below. There was a lot to cover in this video, so huge thanks if you've made it this far. And as always, check out my Instagram to see any other projects I'm working on, and please consider subscribing to see future content. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you in the next one.